Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. Tonight, we are shedding light on some unsolved murders in our area, in Franklin and here in Nashville, and talking to the mothers uh, uh, that had their sons murdered, and they are hoping that by talking about it tonight, hopefully, uh, it can help solve the case. And um, I really appreciate our two guests. We have Denise Floyd, uh, mother of Jamarcus Esmond, and Latarsha Holt, mother of Tyler Holt. They are joining us via Zoom. Um, and let's, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hey there. Hey, ladies. Uh, I, I really do appreciate Hello. you coming on. And my heart really, our heart's really heavy for you. About 50 years ago, uh, a boy was dropped off in an emergency room here in Nashville. And uh, nobody saw who brought him in. And uh, I hadn't heard much about it. And I was sitting around with a bunch of other girls. And these two boys came in to the friend's house we were visiting and start talking about this kid to, took too much drugs and they tried to walk it off and they couldn't get him to uh, come out of it. And he had overdosed and these were supposedly good kids from good families. Nobody would have guessed they were into all this. They didn't know what to do. So they took him to the emergency room outside and set him down and left, and he died. And it's only been in three years, in the past three years, that I found the story about who this is in the newspapers. And the mother in the news story pleading for anybody to tell her what had happened to her son. She wasn't going to hold them responsible. She just wanted to know what happened. And I'm thinking of all the other girls that were there, if they would have had uh, a crime star for phone line because it hadn't started yet back then i think some of those girls would have called in and told them what they knew because we were all kind of shocked i didn't know the guy they may have the other girls but i didn't and I don't think people realize when you call into the crime stopper line what they do is they give you a number you call in you tell them any little thing that you might know and they give you a uh, number for an anonymous number nobody ever knows who you are and then if there's a reward in the case they collect the number that you can collect it in cash or however i think it's cash and nobody needs to know and kids talk 27 year olds talk people talk they start to talk about this because this weighs on them so i really hope that it's weighing on somebody if they're listening to this show that when they run their mouth in front of a bunch of other people you know if they think that there'll there'll be a snitch by calling in if they run their mouth somebody eventually is going to call in so i highly suggest to them run your mouth a little bit talk about how it's bothering you because you don't want to be a snitch and then i hope somebody hears and i hope somebody calls in okay ladies good luck to you and i'm sorry that this Thank has you. to happen to you it's happening too many times and sometimes yes. it's the right thing is to grow up a little bit and maybe be a little anonymous and do the right thing. Okay, good night, ladies. Thank you, Thank you. ma'am. Thank you for calling in. Well, well, let me ask each of you what you, what you think of that. Um, Denise, what, what, what do you think of what Lucy said there? I think she is correct, but like even in Jamarca's case, um, there's a $5,000 uh, reward and still, I don't, I, think, I don't think they care about the money. It's all about the street code or either they're scared. They don't care about that little reward money. Wow, so there is a $5,000 reward and that hasn't generated it. Yes. Um, nope. Where did that reward come from? Um, from the Franklin um, Police Department, but yeah. Okay, and Latarsha, what do, what do you think of what Lucy said? Um, I believe everything she said was true, but um, in my son's situation, it's basically like everyone in the room, to me, is sticking together. Like they've agreed not to say anything, and I don't know what it's going to take for one of them to break, but 
it's like they've they've agreed that no one is going to tell tell anything. Are they somehow accomplices then, in your opinion? Or are they victims? My heart is split half and half. I'm going to be honest. I don't know who to trust. My son is the only one that is now laying in Greenwood Cemetery in a, a tomb inside of a concrete wall. So I'm split 50-50. They won't cooperate. So that leaves me to, you know, think other things. Mm -hmm. And how frustrated are you at the pace of the investigation? Very. Um, in, let's see, three days, it'll be six months. And they've gotten absolutely no further to me than they were the night before, other than waiting on ballistics and evidence that they had to wait on anyway. But closer to making an arrest, I hadn't seen that. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And do you compare this to any other cases that happened around that time? Um, yes, there was a Caucasian woman shot on the interstate going to St. Thomas Hospital either the day after or two days after Tyler was murdered. Um, her murderer was caught within a week's time. They put up a big old reward and she was randomly shot on the interstate and they caught her murderer. My son, I feel like Metro has kind of like drug their feet some because of his age and race, because he's a young black male. And our kids typically have been labeled, but in my son's situation, I mean, nobody deserves to be killed anyway, but he hadn't done anything. He, he was on his way to school. He had done all the right things. He didn't deserve for his life to be taken. And now it's like the public really doesn't care. And it made me feel like it was a race deal because this woman, woman was randomly shot going to work and they put up all this money, all the country music singers and all. And I was born and raised in Nashville. My son was is from Nashville and nobody stepped in to try and give a helping hand or donate any money for reward or anything. But they put up all the money for that nurse and they had her killer in a week. Like they made her case top priority. And I honestly think it's because of race and, and his age. She was um, a nurse. That, that was very, um that was a high, high profile case. Yeah. Um, but I, mean, I don't get how her case was any more important than my son's. Exactly. She, interstate in Nashville, my son was shot at Wyndham House Resort in Opryland. Opryland is one of the best places you can stay at in Nashville. There's no way her case should have been a more priority than his was. And he was a child. He was only six months of being 18. He was still a kid. Mm-hmm. How frustrated are you about um, video? Do you feel like there should be video from Wyndham there? Yes, they have no they had, um, security guards walking around, no cameras at all. And from my understanding, every public place is supposed to have surveillance cameras. Wyndham House does not have one camera there. Then they did not, when I got there and my son was laying on in their property dead, I basically had to fight the police to go to the back. They were not going to let me back there. My kid was in one of their rooms dead. There was another, was there another murder at that same place or nearby? Or what, what, what's the situation there? Yes, um, another guy was murdered, um, maybe shot or something two miles away, somewhere in the Two Rivers area that same night. Originally, the news had put both stories together and said that he was leaving the room where my son was and him and my boat, my son were both shot that night at the same place. But from what I'm being told, they cannot still connect the crimes. They are two different homicides. Those people were not at the room where my son was at from what I'm being told by Metro. It's two separate cases. And has that case been solved? No. Yeah. And I work with one of his family members, no. Mm -hmm. And the same detective is on my son's case and that guy's case. And either one of the cases have been solved. What do you think would help? Obviously, the what I hope is that somebody that was in that room will do the right thing and come forward and talk. And, and I hope the same I hope the same for you, Denise. Somebody that saw it will come forward and talk. Is there a reward, Latarsha? Is there a, re a reward in your son's case? No. 
And I think if there were, because there are kids involved, they'd probably talk, but there is no reward. So maybe that would help. Probably, yes. Yeah. What, what do you think, Denise? Um, would you like to see the reward bumped up? Um, I'm glad there is a reward. What, what, what do you think might help make people come forward here? I'm not sure because it's going on a year and at this point I'm not sure what'll make someone come forward. I'm not sure and it goes back to I don't know if the detective like have any leads and he's just waiting on evidence to come back before he make an arrest. And you know, they're not gonna tell me too much anyway. So Basically, when I call him, it's all, I'm still waiting on this, and he just kind of listen to me vent, or if I have some information of some stuff I've heard off the streets, I give it to him. But it got to the point where I was making myself stressed out because every time I heard something, I'm acting like a detective. I'm writing stuff down, and I'm like, okay, this is getting overwhelming. Like, it was stressing me out, and I had to, like, kind of remove myself because it was heartbreaking. I'm writing names down, calling the tech detectives. What well, you need to talk to this person. You need to do this. And then I felt myself like just accusing everybody. Like I don't know who to trust. I'm looking at everybody sideways. Like you know, and I hate being like that because I don't want to just be accusing any and everybody. But that's what I find myself doing. And what about that? Were you, were you going to say something, Latarsha? I said, yeah, I get what she's saying. It makes you paranoid. That's how I am. You just, you don't know who to trust anymore. Yeah, I bet. Let me ask, uh, let, let's go back, Denise. Give me, give me more detail. I'm reading this article, and it says Jamarcus was coming home from a birthday celebration. Is that right? Kind of, I guess, walk well, us he, through what was going on, you know, okay. prior to all this. That Friday night, he had went to a birthday celebration. I think they went to Twin Peaks in Cool Springs, his friend um, Dusty. And um, they went there to celebrate his birthday. And then Jamarcus came back from there. And that's when they were all just, well, his friends weren't there. It was other people. Jamarcus was hanging with other people. And they was hanging in that, in the Franklin Housing Authority. And, and I thought they had cameras. I would have thought by being a housing authority, but I don't know. And all I know is he was in this house and I'm hearing he went out the back door and I don't know. He was shot three times. So was he robbed? Like he, was, he was gunned down to me now. And my son ain't no saint. Nobody's child is. I heard he had been shooting dice. So, and I don't think he had any money on him, so maybe he was robbed. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I live in Jolton, and it took me 40 minutes to get down there to him. So by the time I got there, he was laying in the field, and, like, of course, they wouldn't let me get close to him. So, and it's like everybody kept saying, you don't want to see him, but I think I kind of not blacked out, but I had, like, a gaze over my eyes because I'm like, I don't see him no way. Like, what do y'all see? I was just, I think I was kind of numb. I just, I don't know. So I really don't know a whole lot. It's just a bunch of, he said, she said, and it ain't making sense. And I know a car, I know somebody jumped in a car and pulled off real fast. And, you know, I'm hearing it was three shooters. I'm just hearing all kinds of stuff. That's why I said it's, it's hard for me to be in Franklin sometimes because I'm looking at everybody like <laughs> it ain't right. And I don't know. I talked to um, Lieutenant Warner today and, you know, um, I, sometimes I think they probably think I'm crazy because I call down there and talk to anybody at the police department. I don't care. My granddaddy um, was a police officer. He retired Major Coffee in Franklin. So I... I have family still down there, and uh, um, I don't know. When I need to talk to somebody, they're going to talk to me until they get my son's case solved. Anybody. 
I don't care. You're going to listen to what I got to say. So I don't know. And yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah, good. And coming on here, I mean, good for you. And again, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. And, and Latarsha, what detail, you kind of gave us some, is there any other detail you can give us what led up to all of this? Um, unfortunately, my son's story goes the same way. Um, there was a dice game and they said that someone came to rob the dice game. Well, they said three to four people came in. One story is that they were all sleeping and there was a knock at the door and Tyler answered the door. Then there's another story that says Tyler went outside to spit and he was grabbed and brought back inside. Um, but the story is basically the same dice game. If there was a dice game and um, the boys may have went live and showed money off and like maybe somebody came to get the money. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Yeah. And so that but, makes makes you want to warn other kids, you know, don't don't do this stuff, right? Don't be involved in it. Don't indulge in it. And believe it or not, that was me and Tyler's last argument. Me arguing with him about those friends and dice. <laughs> I had washed his clothes and I found several pair of dice in his pocket. And I told him maybe 30 days before he, he was murdered, the dice game is going to kill you. And now I have to live with that because my 21-year-old son blames me for telling him that, and it happened. He says that I spoke to exist, but I, I actually warned my child that he he died if he continued to surround himself with those people, the same group of people. We argued about this one particular friend from his ninth grade to um, year in high school on up until the senior year. And it was just this one bad friend he had, just one. And he died with this same guy. Mm. I think you did what moms are supposed to do. You told your son, you're warning your son, you know more. You've been around longer, and you said what was appropriate. Um, but the sad part is, it it really happened exactly the way I said it would. Yeah, he was taken, and I don't know if it was dice, but that's what I'm being told. And Denise, I I can't believe you moved your son out of Jolton. You wanted to take him someplace safe, no. and. At the time, I was living in Antioch, and so he was going to McGavick High School. Yeah, I just recently moved to Jolton about two years ago. Okay, okay. But you sent him, you wanted yeah. him down in Franklin. Yeah, and he wanted to play football. He, he, ne he didn't want to play football at McGavick. So his senior year, I was like, you can go live with your auntie. Because well, what had happened was his sister had got into a fight at McGavick High School. And the guy, the girl's brother thought Jamarcus was going to do something. So when Jamarcus got off the bus, the guy showed him a gun. And so it scared me. It scared Jamarcus. And I'm like, oh, okay, you've been wanting to go to Franklin to live. This is it. You can go. You can go now. <laughs> so I let him go to Franklin his senior year of high school. And he wanted to play football and everything. He didn't get to play because... Somebody reported him. I think he took somebody's spot on the team to the TWSAA, saying he only moved there to play football. So they wouldn't let him play. He was upset, but he's, you know, he still stayed his senior year and graduated from Centennial. And he played flag football for the Music City. Um, I can't even think of what they're called, but he played flag football with them up until he uh, was murdered and he coached Little League football in Franklin. He loved sports and loved exercise. He was all about exercise and sports. <laughs> wow, okay. All right, well, thanks again to you both. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back, continue our discussion, um, take some more phone calls, um, and hopefully uh, help bring out some information here. Uh, we'll take a break, be back right after this.